Hi, and welcome to another edition of MasterVisualStudio.net. This is Jeff Daniels, and today we're going to be following up on what we did in a previous video called Getting Started with Azure HTTP Functions. In that video, we set up an Azure function that stored the machine and thread information associated with an Azure function invocation to an Azure storage table. In this video, we're going to associate an Application Insights account with that Azure function so we can see how it scales when we apply load to that function. And we'll see how additional servers are allocated and how we can get a better understanding of our function's performance by associating our application insights account to it. So let's get started. I've opened up an existing application insights account here under my Azure subscription and we'll need to get a little bit of information from here that will allow us to associate it to our Azure function. And the information that we'll need on, from the Application Insights account is located down under the Properties tab, and we'll find that further down on the left-hand side. What we're looking for here is the Instrumentation key. We'll want to copy that and use it as part of our application settings for our function to create the link. And now I've got a second tab here with the Function app already loaded, and we're in the Application Settings section for the Function app. Now this isn't located under a specific function. They're all going to share these same settings under the Function app. And I want to paste the information here that I took from the Application Insights instrumentation key. We'll add this App Insights instrumentation key application settings. And once we save this now, we'll be creating a link so that application settings will track server usage for our function. So now that we've got that link, I'm going to come back over to the Application Insights. And what I want to look at here is the live stream. And I go click on that and it tells me right away that there's no information here. It's using an older SDK and that does not seem right. So let's see what happens when we jump back over. I've got the function app still open in a separate tab here. So let's jump back over to that and maybe we just need to put some transactions through to kind of wake up application insights to know that there's some data for it to be showing here. So this is the function that we worked on in the previous video. It's video. It's simply an Azure function uh, trigger, HTTP trigger, that's going to capture the machine name and the thread, and then put that into an Azure storage table. You can see there's our machine name that we're running on. And if we go back over there, we can see we got one server. And we'll go click on that. And we'll click into the live stream for that one server. Should take just a moment. Okay, and now we've got our kind of our overview, our dashboard of the types of resources and response times and all of that great information about our Azure function. So what if we go over and we want to run this again? We could run it by using the uh, URL in this page. So we can just go ahead and put that over here, paste that in run it there and now if we go take a look at application insights we can see sure enough there was a request there we can see the request duration look it's telling us that we've got one server running and that's the name now we know that's not the real name because we've logged that over here in our trace output and we can see the actual name of the server it's telling us we've got one server online so all really good information so this is nice doesn't really show us about scalability though and so that's what we're going to look at next is how do we see or how do we get uh, these HTTP functions to take on a lot of load, scale out to multiple servers, and how do we actually see that happening? So let's go take a look at how we can do that. Okay, we're going to jump over. I am on visualstudio.com, which is Visual Studio uh, Team Services here to do a load test. We've set up a simple HTTP load test using, I'm sure you guessed, the HTTP, the URL of our HTTP function. So if we go ahead and click on that, we'll go take a look at the settings. You can see there's our URL. And I'm just going to add the name parameter at the end. And it's fine that those are going to be the same for all the calls. We're not really testing that part of the functionality. So we'll go ahead and save those changes. So what this will do is this will this load test runs for about two minutes. And through the magic of editing here, we're going to shorten that up a little bit. You can see we're starting with essentially flatlined over on the application insights side of things. And so we'll run this test. Now, if you're familiar with load testing on Visual Studio Team Services, what this is going to do is configure the agents and then it's going to it's going to get queued, it's going to configure the agents and there's a warm-up time. I'm going to uh, edit this a little bit so that you won't have to 
save you a little bit of pain of sitting through and watching all that. And we'll see here, we're already in the warm up session. And let this kick on for a minute. And we should see a pretty immediate spike on the analytics side and application insights. So we can start to see a lot of usage come up quickly. And it's going to cycle us up to uh, a couple servers right away. You can see we're at two servers right now. That's actually going to fall back to one server in a minute where Azure will try to manage that a little bit and say, maybe I could handle it with one server. So you saw that it did that. But you're also going to notice that right now if it's at one server in a minute. We're going to see that switch back over to bring on a second server that's going to correspond with this spike right here. There you go. So we just saw that. So Azure is going to bring on that second server when it thinks it's needed. And if you look at the CPU, it was very high on that one server, 94%. Uh, it looks like it jumped over 100 there for a moment. And so there we go. We actually just had a third server come into the mix. So Azure is handling all of this scalability. So this serverless function idea, that, or the serverless computing idea, where we don't need to worry about the servers underlying our functions, Azure is going to handle all of that. And we're only going to pay for the compute time we need. So that's a pretty pretty sweet scenario where if we get big spikes, it can be handled. And what it'll do is it'll kind of bring those servers down and during a cool off period. And once it determines that, okay, we're through a hotspot, we're going to take servers offline. And you can see the load test here is still running. And we've we're at about 50% CPU usage um, if, uh, overall. But if you look, it's like 14 to 20 percent maybe spiking up a little bit and we're probably getting near at the end of our run this is the server the storage explorer if we go look at that storage table that if you had watched the first video you would have seen we're saving all these calls to storage so all of this is happening real time we're also adding it to the storage table we can see the different servers that were coming in on what thread they were on um, and now it looks like we've finished the end of the test run so those are all flatlined if we come back over here uh, it looks like, well, actually it was 100 users, it wasn't 200 users. So we were doing a 100 user test with 43 requests per second. So overall, you can see that scaled up very well. Azure was able to handle the, the, the load that we were putting on it. And, it. and for the most part, we're oblivious to that. Once we set this up, the Azure infrastructure is going to be able to determine when it needs to spin up other servers to keep us with a with a reasonable response time or, or request duration. So through this whole process, we kind of saw we started off, we could run the C Sharp script and just see the results down the bottom. That's kind of the preliminary way to get started. Okay, I can see my functions working. There's my logging at the bottom. We know we jump over to the monitor tab. We can also see it there, where here we'll be able to see how many requests were put through. And it looks like we put through just over uh, 2,000 during that test run. All right, so that's going to wrap up our look at tying application insights to an HTTP function. And we got a good look there at how Azure was handling load as we spun up about 100 users. And it was able to get us three servers on demand as we needed them scaled up and down, kind of based on what the load we were putting on the servers uh, was at at each point in time. So keep an eye out. We've got some additional videos slated for a uh, Azure functions and also some logic app functions or some logic app videos. So keep an eye out for those. Again, my name is Jeff Daniels. Feel free to reach out to me uh, either in the comments below or you can email me directly at jeff at mastervisualstudio.net and I'd be happy to uh, give you further information about any of these topics or if you have some requests for topics, feel free to drop me those too. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening.